Today we're talking about Pro Tools groups. So what are Pro Tools groups? What are they useful for? And how do you make them? We're going to learn all of this in this tutorial, so stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. And also I wanna mention, I have a Pro Tools playlist I have been working on throughout time and I have a link popping up in the top right corner now. This playlist is full of training videos from beginner to intermediate to advanced for anybody looking to get better at Pro Tools. So definitely check out that playlist after you watch this video. So without further ado, today we are talking about Pro Tools groups. All right, so let's answer the first question here, and that is what are groups? So groups in Pro Tools or any DAW are related to tracks, all right? So basically groups give you the opportunity to link different parameters within tracks, okay? So when I say parameters, I mean, I can link mute buttons, I can link solo buttons, I can link faders, I can link pans, etc. So that brings us to the next question is, why is this useful? So let's just talk about faders when it comes to being useful. So I have three kick tracks here, right? So it's not uncommon that we build a kick sound from multiple kick tracks. And when we blend them together, we create our kick sound. So when I'm adjusting the kick level, I don't want to have to adjust all three faders individually. I want to move one fader and then all three faders move at the same time and it keeps the same distance between the fader. So it keeps the same mix between them when I move a fader, okay? So that is probably the most useful thing when it comes to groups. So the question is, how do you make groups? So the best way to go about creating groups is to first click on the track you wanna start with, which for me is gonna be kick in. So I'm gonna click on this here, so it's highlighted. And then hold down shift on your keyboard and then click the last one in the group, which is going to be kick sample. And then you'll see all three of them are highlighted now. Now, if your tracks are spread out in your mix window, that is not gonna work. What you're gonna to wanna to do is hold down control and then click them and then they'll all be highlighted. So that is a Windows feature and that works on things outside of Windows also. It's not strictly a Pro Tools thing, just so you know that, okay? So now that we have all of our tracks highlighted, to launch our group window, we could do Control G on a PC or Command G on a Mac, or we can simply go up to the track tab at the top where my mouse is at, click that, go down to group, and this will launch the create group window. So the first thing you wanna do in your create group window is actually name your group. So we're gonna call this kick. And then below that we have our type. This means that we can either assign these groups to the edit, mix, or both the mix and edit windows. So I always recommend assigning it to the mix and edit windows because to me that makes the most sense. So we'll leave it there. And then over here we have ID. This is pretty irrelevant, just leave it as is. I leave it on the default. And then for your VCA, this gives you an option to assign these tracks to VCA master. And I'll show you what that looks like after we get through this. And then below that, we have an option, follow globals. I recommend leaving this checked. And what this is gonna do is it's going to disable the attributes tab here and make the globals tab be the main one. And we'll get to that also in a second, okay? So let's get to the tracks tab here. So in available, this is gonna show you every track in your session here, and you can simply highlight it here, and you can hit add, and you can actually add it to the group, or you can click it over here in the group, and you can hit remove, and it removes it from the group. So since we actually highlighted our tracks here, and we open a group window, they're actually currently in the group. So we kinda saved a lot of time by doing it that way. So that's why I recommend doing it that way, okay? so. That is pretty much everything for our main view here. So again, let me just show you attributes. See, it's all grayed out here. If I was to disable follow globals, now we have access to it. So 
We're not going to deal with it because I believe you should have the follow globals active. It makes the most sense. All right, so in the global window here, these are the options that we can link up. So you can get a little more in depth with it here when you go with the inserts, the sends, and stuff like that. I don't think you really need to be that involved with it. I think truthfully, the things that matter most are volume and mute, and then solos. And automation mode, yeah, you can leave that on. And then input monitor, no. Record enable, no, all right? So if you copy these settings here for your global, your groups are gonna work well. And this is gonna work across all your groups, all right? You don't need to have different settings per group. I'm just trying to make this as simple as possible for you, all right? <laughs> so below down here, you can actually set up different group settings here. So these are presets. So I can actually make like one here be the setting I just did. So if I go to save and I can set this to one, all right? Now, if I want two to be like pan, so I can get rid of these here, we'll make it pan. I can go to save and then I go to two and then I hit save. Now pan is saved to two. So if I go back to one here, See, we go back to there and then go to two. Now we're on pan. It's just presets. I think it's useless, but they're in there if you want to use them, all right? So those are all the settings that I set up for my groups, all right? So let's actually hit the OK button so you can actually see the groups work in action. All right, so we'll start with solo. They're all solo now. We'll go to mute. They're all muted. And we'll go to volume. And see, they all move together like that. So you can imagine this is very useful, all right? I think the last thing we have was automation mode. So they're on auto read right now. And we can go to, I don't know, we can turn them off. And you see, they all go to auto off, all right? So the other thing I wanted to show you was that we can assign them to a VCA master. So if we go over to our group window here, we right click on kick, we go to modify. Uh, we can go up to VCA here. And then we can go to kick VCA because I already created a VCA track here. That's right here where my mouse is at. I hit OK. You'll see now that if I move one of the faders here, they're not synced anymore. And that's because they're assigned to this fader here. So if I move the kick VCA, watch, they move together like that. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So that's simply how you assign it to VCA master. All right. So a question you might be having is where is my groups window? You see it on my computer, but you might not be seeing it on yours. So if you don't see this tracks slash groups window here, go down to this little arrow where my mouse is at here and click it and it will open it up. This will open slash close it. It is simply a toggle button. So if I click it once, it's gone now. I click it again, it's back, all right? And this groups window here also shows up in the same place in the edit window. So I also wanna mention you have this default all group in here. So if I click on this here, you'll see that all these tracks here are now linked, except for the VCA master, of course. And if I de-click it here, now they're all not linked up, all right? So that is in there by default, okay? So that is pretty much everything there is to groups inside of Pro Tools. Now you know what groups are, now you know why they're useful, now you know how to make them. Now you should definitely go and start using them if you haven't been using them before, all right? So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I love making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.